Well, Steve Young here. I want to personally invite you to the Family First Life Annual Convention in Las Vegas on February 6th through 8th. This convention is free to all and features the best training in the industry. It's all about you being empowered to serve more clients and make more money for your family. All right, guys, thank you. I don't know. What do you say after that? I was at like, what do you say after, after Steve Young said something? I, I don't know. You know, like I was <laughs> at, I, I got to be at uh, Pastor Matthew's church this past Sunday, and a uh, young girl got up and gave her testimonial about, you know, being sober. Her dad was in the audience. It was really cool. People were crying, and then Pastor Matthew's like, hey, and then we got a good friend of ours who wants to come up and talk, you know, and help. And I'm like, I don't want to talk after her. <laughs> like, like, everybody's in tears. She has such a great story. She's smarter than me. She speaks better than me. I'm like, I don't, you know, she's, you know, 21, 22 years old and getting her life together. And her dad's, she thanked her dad for not giving up on her. I'm like, oh, my God. And he's up there waving. Tony's yeah, proud of her. I'm awesome. like, oh, man. You know, so anyway, I don't know. Steve Young is, uh, is you know, it's kind of funny. As great an athlete as he is and he was and, and football player as he as he was, and I'm pretty sure if he still played today, he would be. Plus, you don't have to hit you don't hit the quarterback anymore. He'd probably come back sure. out of retirement and play. Yeah. Because, like, he, I think he couldn't play anymore after all his concussions. Yep. You can't get a concussion nowadays because if anybody hits you hard enough to give you a concussion, they're thrown out of the league for 12 lifetimes. <laughs> You're li they're literally not allowed to play in the NFL ever again. So so I'm pretty sure he'd, uh, he could probably still go out there. Die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be like, like, it's kind of funny, like rugby. They play around the people and step on them. And, like, yeah. I, I was watching a match one day and I said, are they going to are like, are they going to get that guy? And the guy's like, if it's serious, I'm like, he's unconscious. <laughs> like on a level of what would be serious, he's right. like unconscious, you know? Um, so that, it's it's funny. And by the way, just, you know, I'm a big Karate Kid fan, okay? Oh, yeah. This this is one of the Karate Kid But the reason I'm a big Karate Kid fan is because a lot of us have been Daniel LaRusso. Mm -hmm. like, like when I went to my bus stop in fifth grade and Gary threw bottles at me, I didn't like him. But he was like in ninth grade, and I was in fifth grade. And I was always thinking, like, I'm not going to run from him. But he looks like a grown man. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure he can harm me. You know what I mean? And I looked like I was in third grade. I was in fifth grade. And, uh, and I was really young for my grade, too. So I was probably should have been, like, fourth. And and uh, But we've all been there. I just didn't have a uh, Miyagi, right. you know, to, to train me. So, But I found some Miyagis later in life in baseball and the whole deal. And ran into Gary later in life when he wasn't. That much bigger than I'm me. your huckleberry. <laughs> that's exactly right. So anyway, <laughs> that's that's the story for a different day. So next level live today. Um, we have some amazing guests. I want to hit on some of the things I think they're going to hit on. We uh, again, I mean that. I appreciate Steve Young, Integrity Team, the whole whole crew. We are going to have an amazing event. Um, they've seen a lot of the trainings we do and how hard we work and things we do to help the agents out. And this is only going to get better. This is just going to yeah. continue to grow and grow and grow. We come off a, a record smashing submit week. I mean, like, and again, we know fourth quarter is always good, but when you're growing at the rate we're growing at, like when you go from a hundred million to 220 million in a year. And then you still break a record and a submit week. Like we're, we're crushing it and um, we're crushing it. Cause you guys are awesome and you're serving clients and that's just unbelievable. It's, it makes me feel real good, real happy. Um, so it's going to be an amazing event. I really appreciate him taking the time. That's the kind of person he is. I was telling him about um, Ruggiero's son. He's a quarterback and he's really good. I don't, like with kids, everybody, nobody, Everybody, no, don't be offended now. We're all here. But when we're parents, we all think our kids are three times better than they are. Right. <laughs> like, you've got to see him play. So the guy the other day told me how good his son is at hitting the ball off tee. Yep. He's like, he's unbelievable. They put him at shortstop. I'm like, in T-ball, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like my kid, when I coached T-ball, they ran the wrong way. You know, like oh, they yeah. ran. A, so, but he's super nice. But his kid's really, really good. He's left-handed quarterback. And so I had seen, I went out to a meeting. Steve Young was there. And I just mentioned it. I just said, hey, man, man, this kid, he's like, I need to meet him. I'm like, Okay, he's like, can I do a video for him? So he says, there's a video for Tyson. Tyson's a freak, by the way. Yep. In the very most complimentary way you can get. Like, he's a freak. <laughs> and uh, he said, hey, Tyson, I heard you had four touchdowns this weekend. You threw for three and you ran for one. He said, I want you to know, I had six in the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> he said, four's outstanding. He spun his hat around. He said, it's time to go to work. And that's what strikes me. That's kind of how I feel about where we're at. Like, it's time for us to go to work. Like, I think that what I mean, like, not not that, you know, take that analogy, right? It's four great. course, four is great. You can get to six. But when you have that kind of ability, it's time to go to work. So you listen to Steve Giordano talk today. It's about, you know, you we had asked him, hey, can you talk about doing 40 grand a month? He's like, yeah, I did 80. 
right. issue paid. So I can definitely talk about doing 40. And I, I, I think it's it's one of those things where when you really get a handle on um, the attitude, the activity part of it, the sky is truly the limit. Like you really – so Steve will tell you I'm not like crazy special – I just work real hard, have the right presumptiveness with the clients, and he does deeply, deeply care about them. Yeah. Like deeply, which is awesome. So that being said, uh, we have Andrew Taylor. Yeah. Andrew's gonna talk for his time about hiring. Um, you should listen, even if you go, I'm only selling. I just want to sell right now. Do sell, don't sell, do whatever you want to do. But listen to what Andrew's saying because two years ago or so he was just selling too. And I mean he's just, but that was his words. I'm just selling. <laughs> Outside of his 20, 30 grand a month, he had 50 grand in volume, and now he's doing a couple million dollars a month. He's making a lot of money, has different kinds. So I'm just, just hearing my eyes and go over some very tangible things. And Zach Luffles, um, if nothing else, you'll be entertained. Um, all seriousness, Zach's unbelievable. Zach's somebody who, because we don't, a lot of people don't talk about the quality of business, Mike. Like we always have, because yeah. that's how you get paid. <laughs> like that's why we're big issue paid. You know, we talk like even that submitted number we did last week. I'm not going to go ahead. Show me the money. Yeah, I saw you. That's good. Yeah, but I mean, but seriously, the the submit is just that. Yeah, I'm not going to lay out the submit number from last week. Yes, it was a record. Yes, we're excited. But the issue paid business, and then what your persistency is, is how you're going to be profitable or not. Right. That that's it. You're going to be profitable. You're not going to be profitable. <laughs> and that's all all going to be based on. Um, your quality of business. So Zach, somebody who was writing a ton, get a lot of people, to, but really too much of it was, was falling off. Not in like, Oh my God, what he's doing. It's just some things he had to tweak because th that's the thing for me, Mike, back in the day, we didn't have like the e-app deal. So we'd write everything, but my persistency was always crazy, crazy high. You know what I mean? Cause once yeah. like on the books, it was stay on the books. Yeah. And my, I was like, hey, somebody's like, well, I'm not as profitable. I'm like, I know what my persistency after 13 months is in like the 80s. And if yours is here, and I suck at a lot. Like my placement, I was like, I was writing everything. You know, I wasn't trained on placement. You know, I was trained on <laughs> persistency, you know. And and they're both very, very important. But for your bottom line, it's that, and there's very simple things that, you know, Zach will share with you. It's very simple things you can do. You know, number one, making sure the deal is a deal. I think that's part of it, too. People want to get excited. That's why we also, Mike, we never really did the whole submit, 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 because people would fight for leaderboards, right. and they would fight to submit stuff and report. And, and listen, we all want to win, so I'm not mad at anybody for doing it. But at the end of the day, you're like, dude, but it's not making you any money. You didn't help any families. You didn't make any money. So- Deal's got to be a deal, right? If somebody's ambivalent at the end, I, hey, Mike, Christina, it comes back exactly the way I'm showing it to you today. $81.05 a month for you, Mike. $71.02 a month for you, Christina. All your money back. Here's the total you'll pay a month. Here's how much you'll get back in 30 years. You both outlive it. Any reason if it comes back this way, Mike, y'all wouldn't keep it. I mean, that, I, I want it because let's talk about it. And what are the two reasons that people, what are the two reasons people wouldn't buy from you, Mike? It's in the too home. expensive and they don't trust you. Yep. And that's, by the way, that's universal. Yeah. I'm just, I'm not, you know, yes, it's something we talked a lot about. You know, we we ran a lot of appointments, but at the end of the day, and it when they, when I say they don't trust you, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. Right. You've not built that trust. It doesn't mean you necessarily did anything wrong. You did anything right. I don't know. You did they just don't have the trust. Maybe they have a dist maybe they're distrusting my nature. You had to work. May I don't know, but you have to ask. Hey, Mike, after we've gone over, and then you obviously wanted it before I got here, and the only two things that ever tend to have people that applied for it, because you actually really did with the with formula filled out, and not go ahead and move forward with a formal application is either, you know, you think you can't afford it, which would be my fault, or there's something about me you just didn't like or didn't trust. You know, and I think that that's okay to ask. Yeah. You're in somebody's home, ask them. Um, I think the follow-up, too, is a big deal. You hear him talk about all that, and, and so at the end of the day, I really think this call is going to help in so many levels. I love, you know, Steve's going to be hard charging. Here's what I do. Go out and meet with folks. Um, it leads or leads or leads, whether they're brand new, a few months old, Facebook, internet, direct mail. They are what they are. Um, and then I think, listen to Andrew talk about, we, we've we never been in a place. We've had so many people reaching out to us to work with us. <laughs> never. Right. Never. I mean, we've worked really hard. This has been a new marketing transition for us, the amount of people that are contacting us. So it's really, it's great. 
we're not remotely mad about it, but we're kind of taking a step back going, wait a minute. Okay, they're all calling us. Nobody's doing what we do. Nobody. I mean, they're not. We we continue to stand by the things we stood by, and they don't. Our comp's still the highest. We don't have a contract. Seems like everybody else does. We give the renewals away day one. You're vested day one. I, I, I don't think most people do that. We don't charge for anything. Um, that's what's happened on some of these bigger um, managers now. They're getting offices, and they're kind of subleasing some office space purely because people are like, listen, I want a place to go, and I have money. Right. Like, I don't want to go buy an office building, and I don't, you know, we built the space here, didn't realize that between Eric, Matt, and, like, we just filled it up. Yeah. And, I, and we weren't trying. Listen, we gave them a discount, the whole deal, because it's upstairs, but the build-out was expensive. It didn't make them sign any kind of long-term leases, but didn't realize, like, they have money. So it's good they're profitable, you know. Um, you want to give us, Mike, a quick CRM update? Yeah, sure. So uh, you guys might have seen a few emails go out um, this Sunday CRM may be down for half hour, hour or so. We are launching phase one of the new CRM. Um, so in, in order to make it a lot easier for everybody and not shut it down for three, four days, we're kind of dropping this in phases. So the first phase will be the new heat map. Um, so initially we want to kind of streamline the ordering process. Right now you kind of order in three or four different locations. So when you wake up Monday morning, um, at maybe even sometime Sunday, we're going to update you guys You know, as soon as we know something. So... Um, but you'll go on to a new heat map that will show you where all the leads are saturated throughout the um, United States. And you can click on whatever state, drive down to county, city, zip code with certain leads or whatnot. And then, um, you know, from there, order all your leads one shot. This is be phase one. And obviously, we'll update you guys, you know, a, as we start releasing the other phases. But this will be, you know, Monday morning, brand new heat map, start of the new CRM. Just think about something as simple as that. Like, because our current system, as we've acknowledged, sucks. Correct. Right? Yeah. And but think about the time you save now when you're trying to get your leads in order. Yeah. Right. Just being I mean, able to see them. <laughs> yeah. Like how long does it take to kind of sift through three, four different places, and then try to figure it out, and then do I have what do I have over here, and then I got to email in over here, and as opposed to going like boom, one stop shop right. for basically your, uh, you know, for all your lead needs, yeah. and then it's gonna be released in, released in phases. Correct. So are they also gonna keep coming out. Make sure we because it's like anything else, we're gonna launch it. We don't anticipate, but there could be some glitch. We'll fix it right away. Yeah, our, I mean, our, it, it happens. It happens. <laughs> um, I don't I don't understand any of it, so I, so I can't yep. really begin to talk to you about, like, well, this happens. We do this. We just know we have a lot of really right. a lot of people out smarter than me that are on it, and if we have a problem, we're going to fix it. And the thing, too, Sean, is, you know, there's so much data in there that we're preserving. You know, it would be easy to just launch a new CRM and leave everything where it's at, but we want to take every piece of data, every lead that every agent has, and move it into the new system. So that that will be kind of the final piece, which may, may take a day or so. But that you know, we don't we don't want to lose any of that stuff. So. Right. Well, we're just excited, and yeah. um, we really are. I think it's going to be a great deal. That with the app, there's so many good things we got going on. Um, carriers are excited. Annual convention. I, you know, I'll, I'll I'll end with this. We um, what blows me away, Mike, is the amount of people I meet doing all these meetings. Like I just came off of, I was on the road for ten days. Um, I kind of joke, really poor planner. Like I'd fly across country, then fly back across country, then fly back across. Country. <laughs> like who's in charge of this? You yeah. know, like Magellan, obviously not. Right. And uh, but the amount of people that said, you know, I was listening to somebody on Frank Euphemia's team, and then she's like, and I they just said I had to go to convention. I didn't want to go to convention. They had said I had to go to convention. I didn't want to go to convention. You know, I, I was thinking about it. Talked to my husband. We just like I didn't want to go. I just did not want to go. And they just did not let up on me. They didn't demand anything. I'm an independent contractor. They're just like, we can't replicate it. We and she's like, I went. Now she's, you know, 20, 30 grand a month. She's like, I just, I could never have gotten that information had I not attended. And that's probably, and I hear that all the time. People are like, I didn't know what we all had our hands on. So I went to convention. I got to see it. I got to meet the people. I got to ask questions. I got to be part of it. It didn't cost me anything, and it allowed me to really raise my business acumen immensely for those couple days. And I came out of there equipped to go be a really, uh, a really good producer. And then, you know, to beginning of uh, being a good manager and VP and board member. Because that's the other thing we realized. You know, you used to people would say, "Well, this we need this type of person to build a team." They're like, "No, you don't. No, it doesn't matter. Look at ours. It doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> doesn't discriminate." It does not discriminate. So 
Um, I hope you'll enjoy this. Steve's unbelievable. Andrew's unbelievable. Zach's unbelievable. Y'all are unbelievable. We got to continue to serve the amount of people we're serving. The amount of life insurance we're putting in force is pretty remarkable. We're actually going to start tracking some more of that to how many policies in force, Mike, like quarterly, annually, to give you an idea how much premium we actually have in place out there. And now that we're automated, we won't have to do it at night with the three or four of you, right. you know, by hand, <laughs> which doesn't work. So thank you so much. Have a great, great week. Please take some notes. Pay attention. Steve, Andrew, Zach, it's all yours, guys. Appreciate it. Hey, guys. Steven Giordano, Family First Life Health and Wealth here in beautiful Fort Lauderdale. Today, I'm honored and privileged to be on the Next Level Live. What I'm going to be talking about is how to write 40000 a month consistently. And that word you're going to hear a lot because, to me, it's all about consistency. When we build a house, we have to build a strong foundation. So I like to break things down to the least common denominator for myself. So first of all, we have to have a mindset that's a winning mindset. When we attack this business, we need to say to ourselves, we're going to win and we're not going to lose. And that really starts within us where we're saying no matter what happens, we're going for it and we're just going to win because we're winners and that's what we want to do and that's what we're setting out to accomplish. That's our goal. So that mindset is great, but there has to be habits and things behind it that will lead us to writing 10K a week, 40K a month. So let's start with schedule. We have to be diligent with our schedule and have non-negotiables around our schedule. I know for me, I need to run 25 to 30 appointments each and every week so that means that no matter what, I have to find a way to get there. So that starts with lead flow. I know that I have to have 60, 70 leads coming in fresh a week, and I need to be diverse in my leads. Facebook final expense, mortgage protection, ever quotes, some of the live call transfers. I need to be diverse. I need to have a lot um, because I need to be able to fill my schedule with a lot of activity to make sure that I'm hitting those numbers. A lot of times we get very emotional about the fact that um, we don't write enough premium and we don't hit 10K a week. And really what we need to get emotional and upset about is the fact that we didn't do enough to buy enough leads on the front side. We didn't dial long enough. We didn't book enough appointments. If we could get so annoyed about those things, it would lead us towards um, not having to be annoyed about the results of actually getting to the 10K a week. So we're looking at schedule. We all have personal things that go on in life, and I think sometimes we'll let those things get in the way of our goals and focus on how to write the business that we're looking to write. So when you have things going on family-wise, look at your calendar, look at your schedule, map those things out, and then find a way to make your schedule around those things to make sure that every week you have two dial days, you have four run days, and you hit those numbers. So now let's kind of break down a little bit about the day-to-day. -day. So for me on a dial day, I'm getting up early. I get up at 4 a.m. I'm not saying it's for everybody. It's not easy. It's hard. But you know what? If we want to write those numbers, nobody ever said it was going to be easy. It's simple, but not easy. So getting up at four, maybe for you it's five or six. I do it. I get my head clear, have some coffee. I'm able to uh, read an affirmation and have some gratefulness to my day of all the blessings that I have in my life and also here with FFL and the great opportunity that we have. Then I'm hitting the gym because to me, the reason I named my group Health and Wealth is because I think your greatest wealth is your health because it's leading you towards being able to have great starts to your day and having the energy that you need to be able to go out and run 30 appointments. So I hit the gym and I'm also able in the gym, I'm able to map out my day mentally. I'm listening to podcasts in the gym. I'm listening to music. And then when I'm done working out after about an hour, hour and a half, I'm catapulting myself into the day, into the dial day. I'm back home by around 7, have a little breakfast. Then I'm up in the office, and I know that 8 a.m., non-negotiable, I am on phone, and I'm pounding the phone. And we've talked about it before, the big hour between 8 and 9. That hour is big because you can really get a jump start on people 
um, when telemarketers don't call and we do, and we can book a lot of appointments in that one hour, and it really sets up the day. And let's think about the difference between doing that of maybe having four or five appointments from eight to nine, or if you started at nine. Now you're behind the eight ball, you feel stressed, maybe you get a little sloppy in your phone script, and you feel a little desperate. So let's set ourselves up for success and be ahead of the game. So now we're dialing. We also have to have a mental, um, a little mental strategy with ourselves saying, we need to dial until we book 15 appointments for the two days that we're running next. So whatever that looks like, we have to make sure that we do it. So for me, I'm dialing from that eight to 12. I'll take a break at 12. I'll stop, I'll make lunch, I'll call some carriers, I'll call some new agents, um, I'll, I'll touch base in, in any way I need to. But I know that on the days that I'm working, even though if I'm working from home or in an office, those hours I'm working. So I'm not confused about the fact that whatever's going on at home doesn't really matter because I'm working. So now, I make my lunch for that day and then I'll make it for the next couple of days out in the field because when I'm out in the field, I don't wanna have to stop. If I stop at a Panera a half hour, four times a week, and I start doing the math on that, there's a tremendous amount of appointments that I could have been running. And that could take you from being a 200K producer to a 300, a 300 to a 400, all because I stopped to have lunch. So now I pack, big cooler, I have my lunch, the whole thing's set up. I can kind of book my whole day out and just kind of eat and go um, the way I need to. So now I'm dialing, I have those 15 appointments. On the run day, same dynamic. Up early, gym, out the door, try to hit that early appointment, um, 8 a.m., it's gold. People are there, people are home, and people are buyers at 8 a.m. So that's always a big way to start the day and get things flowing. So now the other thing I touch upon is the fact that we need to pipe into training and we need to do it um, as also a non-negotiable. In the time in our week, in our drive time, we need to um, a lot for time to listen to training. Also, like I said earlier in the mornings, later at night, and then also while we're in the car, not pumping music all day long, not listening to sports radio, but calling agents, running ads, calling agents, touching base with other agents, and building our team, building our business from the car. And again, understanding that if I'm out in the field from eight to seven or eight to eight or eight to six, whatever it is, all that drive time, I'm really building my business. And that is a work day. And what's really great about this business, and I think we all understand it, is the fact that we're able to buy back time because of the work that we put in, in, in the front, in the front side where we are building things and building the agency and getting other people going. So also understanding that in the beginning of this business, we need to sacrifice more. We need to give more. And then on the back side, it's going to be able to give more back to us. I also think it's really important. I mean, it's something that I work on every day is to handle the ebbs and flows and the ups and downs and the chargebacks and the this and the that um, and the no shows because they really don't matter if you have enough activity. Now, if you don't have enough activity, they are going to play a mental game with you and they are going to cripple you. And you need to make sure that when anything, the business kind of punches you in the mouth, that you're able to take it and you have the next appointment, the next door knock, the next, you know, big policy is right around the corner. The next family to protect is right there. It's just a matter of you structuring and uh, filling your schedule to do that. I think if you can do a lot of these things just repetitively and not let life get in the way of your business, you're going to consistently have those numbers. Um, to me, that is the formula for success. It, it's very simplistic in nature, but I think the problem sometimes is we let things distract us and we need to not let that happen and understand that the more that distracts us, 
the more that it's going to hinder us from hitting our goals. We all know that this business um, is a tremendous, tremendous opportunity. And we're exploding right now all over the country. Um, there's so many great things going on. And uh, Sean and the team, they're really going out of their way to innovate a lot of things for us. And we need to capitalize. Um, one thing I said early on to Mark, um, who's my mentor, was I came from corporate America. And I worked really, really hard. I worked in, in restaurants and worked a lot of different hours and a lot of different things. Um, and if you told me then that I'd be able to issue pay 400 grand and upwards and work less than I worked at a job making 100K, I would have thought you were kind of a little crazy because it, it really is a little crazy. So we can't fool ourselves into understanding that we need to put in the work now. But the difference again is that buyback of time. I could have worked that job for years and made incremental raises and never be able to get myself to a point of financial freedom. Whereas now I'll be able to do that as time goes on because I'm laying the groundwork each and every day and understanding the opportunity that's in front of me and understanding that if I have to work a little harder now, it's going to pay off later on. And it already is paying off. That's the tremendous thing about this business. We have such gratification as business owners early on. It's really unprecedented um, comparatively to other businesses that are out there. So I really want to see everybody out there that wants to get to 40K a week. I want to see them get there because it's really awesome seeing the success of people um, that are in the business that are doing it and that are really, really working hard. So make no mistake, it's hard work, it's dedication, it's having a schedule, and it's sticking to it, and having the right mindset, and the good and the bad, and keeping yourself even keeled. I hope this helps. I really, really am going to plug and promote, finally, the uh, FFL conference in February. Guys, if you have not booked, you need to book today. It is going to be money in the bank and it is going to be a tremendous opportunity for all of these tremendous top producers to get together share ideas share stories and uh, teach us how to be tremendous agents and build a great agency god bless you all and be well hey guys zach luffles uh family first life mountain east um just gonna spend some time with you guys today telling you a little bit about what's going on in my business what i'm excited about um and how i kind of want to close out the rest of the year um we are in the fourth quarter which i think is is one of the best times of the year to um go out and help people with life insurance uh people are thinking about their families guys like they're inundated with family activities from um halloween if you got small ones to um Christmas and Thanksgiving and it's just that time of the year where people get together and um, their families get together and just spend quality time with one another um, with that said their families are right up here in the forefront of their mind okay um, so I think it's the best time to go out there and talk to them about protecting their family okay also things about the fourth quarter that i like is people are in the buying mood okay so like if you've ever worked in a different imo or you've been in the insurance business a while what they will tell you is you can't sell in the fourth quarter the fourth quarter is the worst quarter december's the worst month november's the worst month people take time off blah 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 okay like I think this time of the year is the best time of the year because in the summertime, the kids are out of school, they're going on vacation. Like now they're getting back into the routine. The kids are in school Monday through Friday. The routine is set. We're not taking any vacations unless we're going somewhere for Thanksgiving or Christmas. So um, I think that, that everybody's back on schedule which is which in our business is very beneficial to us because our clients are back on schedule now we can be back on the schedule okay like our all the noise in our lives starts to calm down too okay um so um they'll say things like you can't sell in the fourth quarter because people are saving for christmas people are in the buying mood 
okay? So they're getting ready um, to go blow a bunch of money on stuff that they don't need that's not gonna benefit their family. So it's our job to go over there and, um, and present them with something with value uh, that can put their family in a, in a different place, okay? Um, and, and we go over there and we talk to them about protecting their family. Um, so I think that we got the heads up on that, then them going out to the store, getting on Amazon or whatever the case is, and just blowing a bunch of money. Um, we can show them value on how they could use that money in order to prolong a legacy for their family after they're gone. Okay. Um, also with the fourth quarter comes, um, you first rewards. I've gotten one since they started giving them out. That was the first one because they gave it to everybody who sold enough premium. Okay. Since then, my persistency has been terrible. I mean, like terrible. And I've been working slowly, getting it back up to where I'm getting a check. You know, like I've been watching all you guys um, make your little videos and, you know, get your big checks and posting it on Facebook and doing all those things. And um, I've been paying attention. I've been watching you. But not only have I been paying attention and watching, so has Lindsay. And I've been confronted with, so are we getting a check? Well, those people aren't any better than you, are they, Zach? I mean, are you just not doing enough business with America? Like, what do you know? What's going on? So I've had to answer some, uh, some big questions that are not comfortable to answer. And um, I've had to do some looking in the mirror. And what I figured out was, is whenever I first got um, started with Family First Life, I wasn't putting enough business with America. So what I've started doing is, is putting everything, if you qualify for America, it is my very best and you're gonna get the very best. This is what I would give my family. Um, so I've been putting everybody with America that I can. Um, I realized not too long ago, probably about, a, probably about a year ago, I guess, I looked at my numbers and was like, man, if I, uh, if I would just put all of my final expense, well, actually I just started doing this in the last six months. If I just put all my final expense, instead of putting them with all these other carriers, if they, get, if they can get AmeriCo, just put them with AmeriCo, um, I'll quit cheating myself out of money and I, and I can get them immediate um, benefit right there in the house. Y'all, I'm up to 75000 in the last five months as of Monday. Um, planning on putting another twenty five into that, trying to get up to 100000 in six months. That'll be a personal best for me. Um, and guess what? I'm going to get that check. You know, as much as I wanted to tell Lindsay that it was old Bobo's fault, Bobby, I can't blame you for it. It was all mine, you know, and you've been, you know, watching my numbers climb and they've been getting closer and closer and closer till finally I'm going to get me one of them checks and I want a big one, man, with my name on it and a big old number over there coming to me um, so I can put it up on my wall because I don't have one of those. And I want one, been wanting one. Um, so what I do is like the main thing about getting a check and, and getting business in and we got to get it placed. And um, I, am, I take a lot of pride in not getting people turned down for life insurance. Okay, like I take that as a, a, a personal goal of mine is to get people insurance, not to get people turned down, okay? I don't like getting people turned down. I feel like I failed them whenever they get turned down. They don't know what happens, but I know what happens. I know that things get reported to MIB. Um, I, I try to do right by people like how I would do my parents. So 
I don't like to get things that don't need to be out there out there. Okay. Um, so I have gotten very, very good at underwriting as a field underwriter. Um, I know my products and I use about five of them or, or five companies. I know all those products and those five companies inside and out. Okay. I know the situations that, you know, deem going with this one versus this one, but I've also learned to utilize all of the, um, tools that we have at our disposal. Um, I know with the Southeast, we have a, um, we have a grid that, that helps us out. And I have been doing this for five years and I still check that thing every single time just to double check myself. Okay. It's like my cheat sheet. I want to make sure that I'm doing right by the clients. If I got any questions, I will call somebody, even though I've been doing this for five years, I'm still not too, um, not too good to, to call out, to reach out whenever I need help. Okay. I'll call the carriers guys. That's what the carriers are there for. Their sell support team and all these carriers that we have are, are second to none. They get paid hourly to answer our questions and to assist us. That's how the carriers get paid. That's how we get paid. Um, if you notice, if you go to Family First Life, the, the main site, you notice that there's not a submit, um, a submit leaderboard for the year. All there is is an issue paid one because all we care about is, is getting the clients covered first and foremost and getting our agents paid second. Okay. Like we don't care about submit. Now, a lot of these other IMOs and other companies, they like to go off submit and they like to reward people for submit. And I followed people that get rewarded for submitting business and they don't put the clients always in the best position. And what I mean by that is, is I've been out to people that have clearly got COPD and will not get term insurance and some yin yangs come in there a couple of days before and tried to put them into a term policy. Um, I don't play that. I go out to get people insurance. That's my job. So by the time I leave that house, I want that client to be secure and knowing that they've either got the insurance or they're going to get the insurance and that I'm going to be back in touch with them if I have any additional questions, but I've gotten good enough at underwriting that generally I don't have to call back with, with questions unless it's something like uh, prescription, prescription needed with certain companies. Like there are certain companies out there that'll ask you every prescription under the sun and everything like that. And that's just stuff that, that, that I generally try to get out in front of just because I know with those companies, what prescriptions they're going to have questions about. So I like, you know, I like to be out in front of everything that I'm doing in order to, to, to make it as hassle free and with, without any glitches or hangups as I can, because I want to get the clients covered and I want to get paid. You know, any way that I can avoid an amendment or anything like that, that's what I'm trying to do because, again, I want to get paid. I want my clients to be covered, okay? Um, so knowing the underwriting process and getting business placed, that is super, super big, okay? Like, you got to know things like which companies take COPD, which companies take complications of diabetes, which companies charge more for insulin, which companies don't. Um, these are just a few of the, the major things and hangups that I see new agents coming in with, okay? Um, I think that, um, that the, the amount and the quality of your questions determines the type of business that you're gonna be writing, whether you're gonna be going back four and five times to try to get people in the proper um, in, in the proper products, or if you're going to be um, going there one time, getting them in the proper product the first time, and, and not having to go back out to the house 
four and five times, okay? So there's nothing wrong with calling a product specialist, which would be your upline, or, or if not your upline, someone else that knows the products a little bit better than you until you fully learn everything, because I know that with all the different companies that we got, it can be overwhelming. But that's what your upline is here for, is to answer your questions and to make sure that we're putting the clients into the best position and teaching you where to find those answers that you're looking for by utilizing those tools, such as the grids, such as the RX, um, uh, you know, all the RX lists that we got, you know, cross-referencing their medications to make sure that we're putting the clients in the very best position because I can tell you this, that I'd much rather call somebody in the house and you know show the client that my ego's not too big to get extra help to, to verify, to get third party validation because there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of credibility in third party validation. Um, you know, because I'm going that extra mile and I'm going that extra step to verify with someone else that's higher and more knowledgeable than myself to make sure that I'm putting their family in the very best position that they can be put in versus getting them turned down for insurance and then having to pivot and go back out there and see them again and try to get them into a different product. Okay, because the way that this business is set up is as we go out there, it's a one time sale, help the client right then. Okay, you're more likely to either have somebody else come in behind you that knows, that's educated, that knows that they're not going to get that product. Just like whenever I come behind somebody, like I was saying earlier behind one of the people that get the cement business and get credit for that. Just like whenever I come behind them, I get those clients covered right there. I get those clients into the right policies, okay? Because I'm out there to do my job and that is to facilitate the client and to get them insurance and get them the very best plan and get them what they need. Okay, so I'm, I'll come back out behind you. If you don't do a good job and they let me in that house, I can guarantee you I'm getting them insurance because they want the insurance because they've already bought off Joe over here that sold them a dang policy that they're going to get turned down for. I know the underwriting on all the companies and generally they're going to be representing some of the same companies that we are. So I know if they are, if they're not going to get that product. You know, I know that if it's going standard with one product and then I can get them a preferred rate with another, I know how to do that. You know why? Because I know my field underwriting. I know the underwriting guides. I know the grid. I've got all that stuff at my disposal on my phone at all times. So I can always go back and reference that to make sure, you know, like with the final expense, for example, I mean, you can, it's easy as just reading through the questions. You know, and um, and seeing what the client qualifies for. Another thing, like I said, the the quality of your questions that you're going to be asking. Um, one of the things that I used to get a lot of was I was getting people turned down. See, like back in the day, we had paper applications. We didn't have these e apps where you could get an instant decision like we can now, which I am a huge fan of. And I think that I have been spoiled with them because I now I don't like doing paper applications at all. It's just more stuff that I've got to keep up with and, and just takes more of my time whenever I could be putting that into making phone calls or talking to agents and things like that. Um, so the uh, the questions that, that, that I ask and, and the reason why I was getting everything turned down was I was going, hey, what medicine do you take? And you think that's a question that, you know, you, you've got to ask, you know, um, I thought it was a great question and it's really the worst question you could ask because people take themselves off of medications. 
and you ask them, hey, what medicine are you taking? They're going to tell you what medicine they're taking, not what medicine they're prescribed. Big difference. Okay. Um, taking medicine that they're prescribed, they're going to, so I'll be like, so what medicine are you prescribed? And they'll tell, tell, tell telling me, I'm like, are you taking, are, are you prescribed any medicine that you're not currently taking? Well, yeah, you know, I'm supposed to be taking metformin, but I didn't like the way that stuff made me feel. So I quit taking it. Like these people will take themselves off of major medications without consulting anybody because they don't like the way it makes them feel, which is like super dangerous. But I mean, it is what it is. Um, something else that I've ran across is COPD. A lot of people, so if somebody's a smoker over the age of 50, I'm asking them, hey, you got COPD? And if they say no, I say, do you take any puffers? Any inhalers? Because they'll tell me, no, I don't have COPD. Yeah, I'm on inhaler, I'm on Simbacort, but I don't have COPD. And I know that, again, going back to the underwriting, I know how the insurance companies are going to view Simbacort. They're going to view it as COPD. Because I know, because I've been doing it long enough and I've gotten accustomed to the underwriting, I know how the, the insurance companies look at things. It's not always the diagnosis that the, that the insurance companies are looking at. It's the medications. Because if you got pre-diabetes and you're taking metformin, guess what? You got diabetes. Shocker. You know, like there ain't no such thing in the insurance. You know, if they're taking medication for it, they got it. There's no th such thing as in the insurance world as pre-diabetes, somebody take a metformin. It just it doesn't exist. Like if you're taking it, you got it. You know, and I've got to, and I've got to know that because I've got to be able to explain that to the clients. Um, I think another thing that, that 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 really sets us apart is is adding value to the client and and what i mean by that is is going beyond just helping them with the purchase of life insurance um and again these things right here will help your persistency go up so i always offer people a free will i use www do your own will.com. Um, so I always ask people, especially if I'm sitting down with single moms and, and single dads, I always ask, Hey, do you got, um, do you got, uh, do you got custody, full custody? Sorry about that. Somebody just walked out kind of <laughs> I'm much like Mike Killamit where a squirrel will run out in front of me and I get distracted. Um, but anyway, I'll be like, hey, do you got full custody of the kids? Yeah, 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 I do. Do you got papers, you know, saying that you do? Yeah, well, did you know that you get to, to um, assign guardianship? So if something happens to you, now the way that it works in South Carolina and both North Carolina, they are um, parental rights states. And what that means is, is that if you die, the birth parent, even though they're not in the child's life, can come back and get custody of that child, whether you want them to or not, unless there's something on paper stating where you want those children to go, and it's legal, and it is, um, and it's nullified, okay? So what that means is, that if dad's not part of the child's life now, he's not paying any child support or he's just out of the picture completely, you die, dad comes in, gets your kid, takes your daughter over to live with Aunt June and Uncle Junebug, and then he gets your social security and he gets that check every month. 
and leaves them over there with whoever to be raised. Is that what you want? And like, you will see them go, oh, no, absolutely not. And I even talk about this before I even talk about insurance because I want to set myself apart. I want to build value for that client. And, and I think that that is another way that we can protect people's families by educating them on the way, the ins and outs of what happens if they die. Because that's what we're there to talk about is if they die and how to protect their family if they die. Okay. Um, and then I'll be like, look, whenever this is all over, I'm going to show you how to set that up. Okay. And they're so thankful. Like right there, I've already set the precedence that I'm on her, her side of the table or his side of the table. Hey, man, I'm here for your family, okay? I'm going to leave you with this information. And guess what? It don't cost you a dime to get this information to make sure that she doesn't go back with her father and that he collects that Social Security money off, off, of, you, off of your death. Okay, that ain't going to cost you nothing. So I start off with that, and then I get into the insurance. Well, let's talk about whatever I'm there for, okay? Um, it's just building that value. Um, another thing is, is knowing VA benefits. Um, with the older clientele, oh yeah, I got VA, they gonna take care of me. No, sir, they're not. They're gonna dig a hole, they're gonna throw you in it, they're gonna cover it up, they might play taps, they're gonna present your wife with a flag, give you a marker, that's it. And I don't let them tell me any different because I know, because my dad just went through this. So educating people on what's gonna happen whenever they pass away. The afterwards, are both you guys on the deed of the house? Are both y'all on the cars? Do you know how probate works? Probate's gonna grab everything and keep it if you it, for 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 at least eight months. If y'all ain't on the titles of the car, if y'all ain't on the deed of the house. But it's setting myself apart. And whenever I set myself apart and I give them extra information that I don't have to do that I'm going the extra mile for them whenever I call somebody in the house that I don't have to do to make sure that I'm putting their, their family their family in the, the strongest position. I'm, I'm doing things to set myself apart to help me get that big check on you first because my persistency is going up. Okay? So I'm opening an office here in Greenville, a big boy office. We're going to start having um, meetings every Monday and Thursday. I'm super fired up about where my business is right now and where it's going. The best is definitely ahead of us. Um, you know, if, if any of you guys want to come to Greenville and pour in, you're more than welcome to. Um, I'm super fired up. You're going to get me a big check. You're going to see me and Lindsay. We're going to do a video. It's going to be off the chain. Uh, Christmas is going to be great. The fourth quarter's coming to an end. Let's keep our foot on the gas, guys. Let's keep our foot on the gas so we can blast into 2020. You know, um, I hope that all this information helps you guys. Um, go out there. Make it the best Christmas in the best fourth quarter that we can. Bring on the New Year's. Um, let's take over this thing called the insurance business. FF, let's make FFL a household name. I love you guys. Thank you for everybody that's poured into me. Um, thank you, Sean, for allowing me to get on here. Peace out. Guys, thank you for having me on. I'm going to go over some of the fourth quarter things that we're doing as a team and as a company that I think are going to help everybody. A few things I'm going to go through. These are some of the things we've been training on this week and seeing really good results with and things I've been learning from, uh, from some of the VPs. And the cool thing is, is we've been seeing agencies grow where um, Jack Yu earned the 140 contract, Trey Honeycutt, he earned his way up to the 140 contract. And the cool thing is Jack called me yesterday and he goes, I'm actually seeing a lot more money come through that's not just from my personal pen. And I was like, dude, that's what actually what it's all about is being able to sell until you build an agency to where you don't have to sell anymore. So I think that is the actual goal for an agent to come in, work super hard, 
build a team, build up passive income, and not, now I love selling, so I'll always go back in the field and sell, but I don't wanna have to sell. Having to sell to me to pay my bills every single week, to me that was always kind of like a, a short-term thing to generate a lot of uh, cash to invest to build up some type of passive income. And it's exciting to see what's been going on and how people are doing that. A few tips I wanna share with what we've currently been doing is uh, building what we call a healthy peer pressure. So when it comes to recruiting, what I've noticed is agents usually do what other agents are doing. And we were talking in the office, we we're like, what do people do when it comes to peer pressure? And people came up with crazy ideas. Someone was like, people do drugs because of peer pressure. People drink or they even get, they, there's violence and all kinds of crazy things. Join gangs because of peer pressure. And what we were talking about is build, how building a healthy peer pressure actually helps all agents. And I related it back to when I was new. The person that hired me in the industry, Paul McLean, he was always a lot better at sales than me and initially worked harder in the field than I did. But when I would talk to him, he would build up or he would tell me how good he was doing and it created peer pressure to where I would turn off Netflix. I'd put the bag of Cheetos away on, on a Tuesday afternoon and I'd pick up the phone and I would start dialing because of peer pressure. So what we decided to do as a team is we said, hey, why don't we share pictures with clients when we go see them? Why don't we take pictures and post them on Facebook? And new agents are gonna see that. And then they're gonna go, you know what? That's not so scary. I'm gonna go see people too. And Grady had a great point. He goes, hey, this is what I say when I go to a client's home and I wanna take a picture with them. And I was like, dude, this is genius. And I wanted to share this with you guys. What he does is he goes in and he says, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I'm, gonna, I'm making a collage of client pictures from my office and I'd love for you to be on it. Can I take a picture with you or of you? So he either takes a selfie with them or he uh, takes a picture with them. Then he puts that picture on his office wall to remind him what we're truly doing, helping families and just adding a family every single week. And then on top of that, he's posting it on Facebook which is showing everybody that he's working. And he said, people have called him and, and they go, hey, I wasn't, I got motivated from seeing you in the field and I went out and I sold more than I normally would because of that. And then he's gonna go and even uh, one step further, he's gonna send the client the picture with a note. And he's gonna say, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, it was a pleasure serving you. Here's a picture of us. Let me know if you need anything. I'm going to be your uh, agent for life. And if you need anything, reach out to me. And I was like, dude, that one little thing is helping in all these different ways. And I thought that was a super cool thing to share with you guys. Now, fourth quarter, this is when the, everything counts. And we have a few things just to kind of teach you guys the way we're thinking and what our strategy is to in the year strong and finish going into the national conference uh, in 2020, like everything we're doing right now is building up for that. So what we started doing is we started doing business development meetings all over the country, which means we're teaching people about Family First Life. And I think that the only reason someone doesn't work here is because they don't know the way it works or they're confused about why it works. So if someone works for another company, it's because they don't understand the way Family First Life works. A business development meeting is a meeting to share the way Family First Life works. And what we've been doing is what I would call target marketing. So we're setting up business development meetings all over the country and then we're actually running all of our ads on Craigslist and ZipRecruiter and all these different places in those areas. So if we find someone that's sh that we like and we might wanna do business with, we plug them into that event. And so I've been going around and doing them and then a few people ask me, they go, hey, can I do these as well? So we have agents all over the country that they're setting up their own meetings where they're sharing the way Family First Life works. And we've done them in houses. We've done them, we did one in a buffet and we hired a bunch of people. 
We did, it doesn't really matter where it is. The point is we're just going over the way Family First Life works and getting the word out. Now, the cool and exciting thing is the rate the company is growing, Family First Life is going to continue to grow. And all you have to do is get the word out and talk to people that are already in insurance and get them to go, hey, you know what? I do want to make more money. I want higher compensation. I want these these lead options. I want these different th perks and CRMs and things that Family First Life offer. So what, what, what we've been saying for a long time is this is just a land, a land grab. But our goal is, I actually wrote this down. So since we've been doing these, we have people that are going, I want to do one in my area. And I want to start hiring in my area and telling people about Family First Life in my area. So we have um, Seattle, Sacramento, Bakersfield, Raleigh, North Carolina, San Diego, Ontario, California, Chatsworth, California, Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, all coming up as small business development meetings that we're doing. And if anyone's interested in the company and going or plugging people in, uh, leave a note in the comments and we'll be happy to share the address and the information with, uh, with you. And you can plug in your people and we will help them. Now, coming up is the big event in Atlanta which I'm going and I'm super excited to go and learn from everybody. That's November 7th. If you're on, if you're within a few hour flight or a drive or whatever, I always ask people, I go, um, can you afford not to go? And what I realized is when it comes to recruiting, it's a lot like selling in the home. In the home, you have to figure out what somebody wants in order to recruit them, or in order to sell them. When it comes to recruiting, what I see a lot of people, a lot of agents doing is just telling people what to do without finding out what they want and kind of just giving them orders. And I actually had a dog trainer come over to, to help train one of my dogs and they were selling me on dog training. And when they walked in, they said, hey, we don't want to see your dogs, but we have this inventory sheet and we wanna know why you want dog training. And I knew exactly what they were doing because that's the same thing as the in-home. You get in, you get the why before you show them anything. So they said, what are the problems you have with your dogs? And I'm like, well, they, one of them bit the handyman and the other, whatever. They bark at people or whatever the situation is. And then they hit me with the, it costs X amount to have dog training, which they had a lot, which they could close me at that point because they knew what I wanted. When it comes to hiring agents, what I've realized is we have to ask people what they want. So if I call if I call somebody and I go, hey, you should go to the Atlanta event, but what are you looking for with Family First Life? But what are your goals? And they're going to tell me, I want to be financially free. I don't want to have to work this other job. I don't want to have to do whatever whatever the situation is. And then I can go, okay, you going to this event this is why you need to go so you can we can solve your why what you're trying to do the bigger picture there's also an event in las vegas november 21st a huge event there's 750 chairs there if you're on the west coast i would definitely go to this event you're going to be able to meet sean mike mike Killamit. uh there the the lineup of trainers is insane at both of these events what i would do if I was building an agency and what we're doing is we're getting people to these events because one, it makes it real for them. They get to meet real people. And this is where they make big decisions on going all in on Family First Life and realizing what the possibilities are for them and their family. I'm going to be going to all of these. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody on the road. Thanks for having me, Family First Life. Appreciate everything you guys do.